So when I came up with this title, I was thinking, you know, it, it, this is kind of what we're doing. But then I thought of a better title when I submitted the Green Fund application for this project. And really, Arboretum Bird Campus Collaboration seems like a better fit for this ABC collaboration. So when uh, I got started with this project with Lindsay, it really was a passion for birds. Uh, we got this mass email sent out by Dr. Corfield and he was looking for volunteers for an exciting opportunity to help Salisbury University become an accredited bird campus. And at the time, I was thinking, well, I really need a co-op project in the Masters of Geographical Information Systems Management Program. You are required to, uh, as part of like your thesis or capstone, do a, a master's co-op project, which is a collaborative experience of different organizations coming together to create a GIS implementation. So in my presentation today, I'm going to kind of break down some concepts of GIS, the implementation, and then really show you our methods and what we ended up doing in our geodatabase design. Uh, it wasn't just a redesign. Lindsay had a lot to do on the needs assessment and requirements analysis part of the project. She had been in this, uh, the Arboretum map project from the get-go and she's had a really good understanding of how the current workflows were basically how processes could be taken and made more streamlined. So really, it's a co-elevating collaboration. What I mean by that is we are both in it together to come up with an end goal. We're, we're, we're both working together to create a better product for not only for the Arboretum map, but then also for all these other sustainability projects. The Bird Campus project is just one of many Salisbury University sustainability projects where we have the Bee Campus, the Monarch Way Stations. We, it, just a few of the many projects that could be displayed on the Arboretum map. It's literally a base map of campus with trees. GIS can be broken down into six components. With the power of where it's people. People are fundamental that come together for the GIS. We are using the GIS to do analysis. We're using the GIS to collect the data, to filter the data, to explore options for further research. There are many applications of GIS. Breaking it down into six components though, originally there were five. The network had the Cloud computing and software as a service, SAS, big development in the world of GIS. In my time as an undergrad, when I graduated in 2014, this was just breaking out. Coming back into the master's program eight years later, I've seen so many developments in the field of GIS where now we're able to seamlessly integrate data collection into the GIS itself. It, it can be a platform for your workflows and your processes. The reason a GeoData database redesign was important for the Arboretum map, well first, it was a, the original process was developed back in 2015. And as you know, technology exponentially changes. But just as these uh, graphs show, it also changes exponentially with cost. So as you're going through your different processes of, of if GIS implementation. You first start out with a needs assessment, requirements analysis, then you move to a geodatabase design, and then after the geodatabase design, you're moving up into construction and implementation of your GIS system. You do not want to have a big problem in your implementation phase from something you forgot to take into account in your earlier stages. The cost associated with changing in a, a lower level of GIS implementation is way less significantly costly for time and management if, than if we just go ahead, let's build this thing, and then once you've built it, wait a second, we forgot to account for this or that. Now you can't go back as easily to redesign that element because it's already out there, it's published, it's basically live. So some of the big challenges in geodatabase design, and I love this uh, quote from Dr. Scott, I rephrase something that it's like you're, you're building a geodatabase 
let alone one that incorporates the intricacies of spatial data. Because spatial is special, okay? We're talking about taking tabular data, putting it with a location. Now you have an X and Y in a Z plane. You're turning something into a higher level strategy. But even if you model your data correctly, even if you go through all this process of formulating tables, feature classes, organizing this data, you would have nothing to show for it because what people want to see are the results. They want to see what this database design can do and how it can work for them right now. They want this database to be able to do queries and get the information they need and be able to start their analysis. Unfortunately, when we're starting this implementation phase, basically you have perceived uh, outcomes of the geo database. Like, what is this? Is, this is a database, right? Like, so, no, that's a table. Okay? Tables are way different than databases. You have to educate your end user. You have to let them understand what a GIS can do and how it can be implemented for them. I know this uh, schematic can look a little confusing, but right where we're at with this design, it's conceptual design. So as you can see, we've already done our needs assessment. We've already done our requirements analysis. And the geodatabase redesign, well, we had a geodatabase, but the problem is it was folding in on itself. When we did our initial needs assessment and requirements analysis, we were finding that modeling the user's view of the data, there were a lot of data anomalies. We don't want to have tables full of repetitive data, but then also we don't want the tables to be dependent upon other entities and relationships. We, we don't want them to basically fold in on themselves if we're missing one piece of data from one table. So we, we kind of needed to like, okay, we, we need to take a step back here and take every feature class, every table, and analyze each of the attributes inside of it. Got to come up with a game plan. And one uh, in literature, there are multiple ways to go about this. I mean, this is database and software development companies have been ultimately refining this throughout the decades. But one that I stuck with was Zyler's five steps. And yeah, okay, you can't really generalize, you know, all generalizations are false, right? You can't really generalize a, a very complex process in five steps. But what this allowed us to do is kind of give us a guideline or baseline to then go about the geodatabase redesign. Here's a Zoom call of us and our project supervisor, Julie Golightly. And throughout multiple interviews, what we were doing is looking to see what do they have in place right now? What are they currently using? And how are they using the GIS? For the Arboretum, it's a management perspective. They're trying to be able to use the GIS so that they can manage where they plant trees, how much sun they can get. Are they near irrigation lines? The, the applications for the Arboretum and the horticulture department in general have really helped them to find a use for this data and this analysis. We are focused on the workflow processes. Okay, how are you getting this data imported? How are you putting this into the system? And what we were finding, it was a little redundant the, that the current methodology was, we start in the network drive, and then we exactly at that same point create a new point in the live layer, which is the hosted web layer that you can find on the uh, website and on the uh, uh, mobile app. What we had to do was start from the top down. The network folder structure went based on users and went based on the year and history of those users. So we're like, okay, let's break it down to functions and basically get it to the, the methods that they're being that are using. So it, it can be a this mind map shows all of the network drive folders and broken down into their uh, specific functional. Uh, functionality. A bulk of the project was focusing on this, an entity relationship diagram, where earlier I had said, we break, we're taking all these fields, we're taking every feature class, every uh, table, data. It looks confusing. We're using the optimization of user preferences and in the best of database management and design. We were able to, with this, then start to create new workflows. Yes or no diagrams. This is one of our simplest yes or no diagrams where 
we're just getting a subjective general size for the tree so that you have the symbology to show. Is it a small, big, or a large tree? It gets even more crazy when you're trying to break everything down to yes or no in GIS because there are multiple considerations and questions. This is a, the data import uh, process that we're using one, either the total station, which is going around like a surveyor and collecting points, or now where we have uh, the center of our uh, application on your mobile device with field maps. So now we're like, okay, let's use a new data collection method and let's show you how it can be used. So this also allows for data integrity measures to be in place so that we're not getting these data anomalies and redundancies. We're not getting tons of null values, no information in these huge blank tables. So by going through this, we were also looking at leveraging existing systems in the university itself. There's data backups. We, it, there are things already in place that we could easily go right back to when a GRA-based design failed. Oh, okay, well, let's go back to February. All right, it, it, it restores and the testing of it has been great. All of the data was intact and the geodatabases and the links in those project files still stay intact. Uh, for my project then, I wanted to show a proof of concept. I wanted to go around and show how you can integrate the Arboretum map with the bird project. So here I'm collecting a bird box location on my app, on my phone with field maps, and getting the tree up. Then I'm able to attach a photo of that bird box so that I now have a reference to where that tree or that bird box is located. Here we have our screech owl. He's our first guest of the bird nesting season. So once we set up these bird boxes, now we have streaming and we have the ability to now show you a live photo or a live look inside of these bird boxes. Of course, I'm showing you this because last I checked, one of our, our, our bird boxes right now, we don't have any bird guests inside. But uh, yeah, so here, here's one of our screech owls over there by the environmental house across from Camden Avenue. We now have the Arboretum app on the mobile space. With the partnership with ESRGC, now you are able to download the Arboretum map to your phone. And the power of using that as a reference map, but then also to show all the campus sustainability projects and all the different things going on campus will help to highlight some of the efforts here at Salisbury University to make this world a better place. I, I, I gotta say, it's Earth Day, right? Happy Earth Day. GIS, it's bringing everyone together. I, I gotta say, we, we had a whole bunch of different cooperative partners, uh, the Bird Campus Project, the Horticulture Department, the Biology Department. Uh, Dr. Quillen has been implementing some of the uh, applications and web map uses in her own coursework. And this is just the beginning. Now we can stream live nest cam feeds of the actual birds and the bird's nest. So I'm actually gonna end the presentation and pull up a live feed. You don't understand the amount of work it took to get through SU's Wi-Fi security to get these live feeds. But right now, the, these are in Red Square near Wi-Fi hotspots. And of course they're empty. That's why I put the cam footage of the bird, of the screech owl in the presentation. But, that's live now. Uh, by the end of this project, we'll be able to click the tree with a bird box in it, and you'll be able to view any, all the information about this bird box. If it has a chick or a nest in the bird species, and uh, it, it's really a, a proof of concept to show and prove the value of GIS, not just in the biology, you know, the biology department or horticulture department, but every department.